And welcome in to Soccer Talk with the Albuquerque Soul. It's presented by New Mexico Pinion Coffee. We have from the Soul, Larry Espinosa. I am JJ Buck, and we are joined by Kelsey Bishop from New Mexico Pinion Coffee to kick off the show today. Kelsey, you're a proud partner of the Soul. Why did you guys get involved with the Albuquerque Soul? Well, Brown's been a longtime partner with New Mexico Pinion Coffee, and of course, we love helping out anything in the community. Um, it also gives us a different demographic that we don't often see. So sports lovers, kind of maybe a little bit more athletic sort of people. Um, yeah, and we just love doing anything kind of involved with the community. And you guys have a great name, and we love having our name right next to it. Of course, coffee, it's the way to kick off the day. It's the way yeah. to keep your oh day gosh. going. And you guys are really growing, mm -hmm. which is including uh, opening a new location. Yeah, we just opened our new location a few weeks ago. Um, we went from a warehouse three times the size. We're now in one um, three times the size. Uh, and we also moved our whole retail front, our offices, and all of that stuff. Um, so we're really excited. It's really boosting production. So. And you look at your product. What are the, some of the things that you notice that people have really gravitated to with Pinion Coffee and you know, stands out that the folks can't get enough of? Everything that people say is the smell and the taste of it. So we have such a trademark, um, kind of like a nutty, smooth flavor to our coffee that a lot of people are really impressed that you, they can just drink it black. A lot of times they don't need creamer or sugar if they're normally that type of person. Um, but yeah, people always just come out on the smell. If you, We had a woman come in one day and she just brews it. She doesn't drink the coffee, she just brews it so that she can smell it and have them smell the little house. So yeah, I would say definitely the taste and smell. All right, we were talking with Kelsey Bishop from New Mexico Pinion Coffee, Soccer Talk with the Soul. And not only are you guys opening up the new location, but you have a big thing coming up with the Balloon Fiesta. Oh, yeah. Um, so the Balloon Fiesta is going to be October 1st through the 9th. Um, we're the official coffee sponsor for that. Um, what that entails is that we're going to have two large booths that we're going to be selling coffee and hot chocolate from. Um, we're also going to be doing kind of a little sampling um, area where people can sample some of our popular flavors like Biscuitito, Mexican Spice Chocolate. Um, and then they can actually just purchase the coffee there to take home with them. And once again, the new location opening up, where is it and when can people check it out? So our new location is 2420 Comanche Road, Northeast. Um, so it's just uh, about a quarter mile east of the I-25. Um, but yeah, you can go there, you can get packaged coffee all the way from little sampler sizes, um, all the way to five pound bags. Any, all of our products are there. And Kelsey, it's awesome. You know, everyone loves to start the day with a cup of coffee, and especially in New Mexico opinion, coffee to see what you guys are doing and the partnership with the soul. You know, everyone really appreciates it and hopes for much more in the future. Yeah, yeah, we're really excited to keep this partnership going. Um, anything we can do to help you guys out and the community too. Do you guys have something that I can maybe pick up on the way into work? Do you guys have oh my a, a drive-through yeah. that maybe you're yeah, going to Yeah, so right now we have um, one coffee house. It's a walk-in, um, but currently we're working on opening a drive-through location, which is really exciting. Um, so that's going to be on 4th Street, just a little bit south of Montano. Um, but that should be opening hopefully at the end of next month. That's so what I'm talking about. We're doing about. complete demolition on a building, and so we're really excited. That's going to be fantastic. Well, Kelsey Bishop from New Mexico Pinion Coffee, a great partner of the Albuquerque Soul and a great way to start your day as well. And we keep it going here on Soccer Talk with the Soul. We're going to bring in Jack Clancy, who's up for goal of the month of July, and check out some highlights of PDL action. We wanted to support soccer as a whole. So when we saw the opportunity to try to create a, a home or a hub and support the soul while doing it, uh, we thought it would be a, a great idea. I saw what the soul were doing. I thought, you know, how can we bridge the gap and try to get the youth soccer involved with the soul soccer and try to bring those things together and, and at the same time provide support to the soul with, through things like watch parties and, and getting people excited about it. You'll find that there's a lot of people that relate to this game on an international basis, on a local basis, whether it's the MLS or just a team like the Soul that they can get involved in, involved with in their community and, and you know, feel associated with and supported. We went to an RSL game and it was just mind boggling how many fans were there, the type of support they had, and it was exciting. And I think that Albuquerque's the type of community that could probably support something like that if we could make it happen. Now, welcome back to Soccer Talk with the Soul from the Soul, Larry Espinosa. Joining us now for Jack Clancy, I am JJ Buck. Jack, you guys had an interesting season, and, you know, another fun year with the Soul. Just, just first off, you know, your year with Albuquerque, you know, what was the experience like for you? 
Well, um, yeah, this is my first time coming to Albuquerque, actually, three months ago mm -hmm. for the start of the season. So um, I didn't know what to expect, but um, obviously I'm still here. So I really enjoyed the season, really enjoyed the place, the people. So, yeah, overall, really, really enjoyable. Can I tell you the first time you saw Jack, you were able to bring him in. What did you think of him as a player? Well, the, the uh, coaching staff kept talking about this guy from Ireland. And I'm <laughs> like, has there ever been a good forward out of Ireland? I was <laughs> trying to figure it out. And uh, Jack's just that great 11 player. You know, he, you know, gets in, makes some great runs. And uh, it was really enjoyable to watch him throughout the season. You know, and the PDL is such a unique roster. You, you still have some college players, of course, players that have just graduated and moved on. What's it like when you come in and it, you do have a short period of time to kind of adjust before the season starts with everybody? Yeah, of course. We came in, um, me and uh, another teammate, Ben Teasdale, who I uh, previously knew. He was the only one I, I knew before coming in. So obviously it was uh, kind of difficult, a little bit getting used to new teammates, new players and, and kind of playing with them. But after a couple of weeks, I think it was yeah, a couple of weeks or a week and a half of preseason, we kind of um, got used to each other a bit, got to know how we, how we play. And, and kind of settled into it after after about a month. A few and, weeks. and you just mentioned that well, you're still in Albuquerque. What were your impressions and of the city and how the fans responded to you throughout the year? Fans are amazing. Yeah, I really enjoyed the fans. They were um, Sandy and Easters especially were great support. We had a um, good turnout with Pius most days, and then uh, uh, of course at UNM. And um, yeah, and uh, I love the city as well. Like I said, I'm still here, so I'm. Uh, should be living here for the next year at least. Cool. And you know, Larry, you bring these players in. Sometimes you don't know what to expect, but when you see the group and then have stories like Jack where he realizes he does like this place, wants to stick around, what does that mean to you? But, you know, that's a, that's a kudos not only to the system that we're creating, but it's, a, it's kudos to the city. Um, without the support that we receive, these guys do, doesn't give them anything to strive towards um, you know when these guys go into New Mexico sports and wellness when they go in and they're able to go into the taqueria down here off of Lomas and they're recognized and they're welcomed all, I mean, all that means a lot so it's it's a lot of fun um, it's a lot of fun to see them grow and see them experience um, new things you know, Jack's a green mm -hmm. chili fan now um, yeah. <laughs> which is you know th those things yeah. that we as New Mexicans take for granted and don't necessarily think about but it makes things enticing, so. And, and definitely one of the highlights here, not just the goal we're gonna see from you in a second, but the ability you guys play two games at UNM, especially that second one against Las Vegas, you have you know, 2,100 fans out there. Well, what was that experience like? Uh, obviously it's, it's great to play in front of fans, especially home support as much as that. And uh, I've only played it in front of those, uh, that number of fans a couple of times in my life. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, this is one of the better experiences, and um, it's good that we got a win in front of them. So, and of course, we have highlights from that night against Las Vegas, and we're gonna have a chance to take a look at those highlights and put them up. And of course, it started out, Jack, with your goal, the header. What did you see in the build-up to that? So we put it in the back of the net. Well, I think it was um, uh, Elliot Prost that made a kind of a run near enough me. You can see it in the highlight, but. Uh, it was really all about Isaiah Madrid. His uh, little flick and a turn uh, past one fella and uh, crossed a nice ball into the box. And all I had to do was all I had to do was finish it. So, and it was a, a wild game as well. And you look at the second goal of the night. A defender is stepping up with that touch. Uh, that was something special right there for Nick. Another great goal by uh, Nick Neely. Yeah, it was a great touch. You can see myself celebrating with him there, but. Um, Great touch, great finish, and finished off a good night. And, and to wrap up the season, kind of on a high note like that, when you guys, you know, battling some adversity, and you know, what did that night mean to you? Yeah, exactly. As you said, there was some uh, some games that didn't live up to expectations, but to, to have a game like that in front of those fans, it was. Uh, I'm not going to say worth it, but it was definitely mm -hmm. definitely something something good, something positive at the end of it. So. And Larry, what did you watch this group all season? What was one of the things that you took away from this year's team? You know, we've, we faced uh, we, we faced some struggles. We faced some uh, some injuries early. Um, we 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 faced the ability to develop as a unit right off the bat. I think it took us a little bit longer than than normal. 
Um, no real reason why. Uh, just one of those things that you start to look at. But uh, watching them progress and then seeing the results and you're going, you can't possibly be one, uh, one nothing. Mm -hmm. How did we just lose that game? And you have two or three off of posts that night. And uh, we found that where it was, there was quite a few games where it was just unfavorable in our, in, in our department. You know, we, we, we continue to look to try to find some really good goal scorers. And we had a lot of stuff on frame this year that didn't go in. Um, so, you know, what, what can you say about that? You know, there's, there's an unlucky season. Um, we have those in not just with the guys in PDL, yeah. but all the way across the board. Um, so, you know, we, we go back to the drawing board and, you know, look to bring more guys in like Jack and, you know, watch him develop throughout the year and, and see what, what comes forward for the next year. Yeah, and he it said it's uh, the ebbs and flows of a season. Doesn't matter what level you play in. And last year, you guys, you know, did go on a nice run. But this year, uh, <laughs> some other teams had the opportunity to advance in the PDL playoffs, and we saw uh, some pretty good games throughout the playoffs. Yeah, you know, um, Midland ends up making it into the semifinals, playing Michigan Bucks, who end up winning the entire mm -hmm. thing. Um, Midland was was great. We played them four times. Um, we played them four times. We drew, drew twice. They won once. We won once. I mean, that's that, that's uh, against a really good team. Um, and I think there's a... a yeah, we'll take a look at yeah. the action we saw from Midland and the Michigan Bucks. There's an indoor facility there for Michigan, a unique field have to deal with. That one had nothing to do with the turf header put into the back of the net. Now that's, that's something you see in soccer too now with the artificial turf dealing with the different surfaces and elements and of course this being pretty much an indoor facility for the game. Of course we, as we see that it ended up being the Michigan Bucks advancing to the title game of Midland. Good effort there. And the other one was Calgary versus Ocean City. We have highlights from that one as well, the other semifinal in the PDL playoffs. Yeah, Calgary, I think, was a little bit of a sleeper all season long. You, you know, kind of, they peaked at the right time. Okay, it's just the congestion in the box puts it in the back of the net. And this one was all Calgary, a tremendous free kick from just outside the 18-yard box. And, oh, why not another one to make it 3 nothing for Calgary Foothill as they would go on to face Michigan in the PDL title game. And it ended up being the Michigan Bucks with a 3-2 victory in the championship game over Calgary Foothills. FC. So the semifinals were fun, but I know there was also, at least in the quarterfinals, a lot of representation from Midland and the teams that you guys face on a regular basis. Yeah, you know, so FC Tucson makes it, um, Oklahoma City Energy makes it, um, Midland makes it. Teams, if you add up all the games that we played together, we played them, all three of those teams, a total of 10 times throughout our 14 game season. And, you know, yeah, there's three teams and make it into the, mm -hmm. the quarterfinals that we played all year long. So yeah, did we did we have a, a difficult season? I would say so. Our opponents were, were pretty mm -hmm. darn good throughout the season as well. Um, you know, Oklahoma City Energy, that that battle between them and, and Midland, um, I really thought that that was, that was gonna go the other way. And uh, um, you know, Midland pulled through, and much like they did against us uh, a couple of times. They pulled out a late goal. Um, I, I, it goes to show that there's 60, 67 teams in our league. Um, for three of the teams that we play on a regular basis, mm -hmm. you know, we played them 10 times. So what does that say for our schedule? I think if you were to look at it from an RPI perspective, we'd have a, a, a pretty high RPI. Mm -hmm. Well, this man knows how to put the ball in the back of the net, Jack Clancy, up for goal of the month of July. So head to the PDL website, cast your vote and watch this man's goal over and over. Jack, appreciate you joining us today. No problem, thank you. When we come back on Soccer Talk with the Soul, we'll check out some highlights from the world of soccer. That's coming up next.